Hey, it's Amy, and I teach you how to make money with your art. Sorry about the weird lighting happening here. Um, but I am actually working in the studio. I've got some things to do on a few paintings here. I'm going to be wire backing this beautiful fall scene um, that has just been claimed by one of my art customers. Um, congratulations, Laura. Um, because yeah, it's a very, very cool piece. Oh, and I just noticed I wanted to put a little dot of green on here as well. If you can see like up in the corner, oh, maybe you can't because my light is kind of jacked up, but I have to touch that up with a little dot. So that's what I do, right? When I make a sale, I just look at it. I make sure that nothing needs to be done painting wise which earlier I just touched up a couple pieces on the bottom here that um, basically like when I have it on my easel and I'm painting and then I take it off sometimes like I've got so much paint on my easel that it kind of like stuck and um, you couldn't see a couple of spots there. But yeah, so I'm going to be wire backing this. I usually um, wire back, well, I wire back when I can. It's kind of like, Depends how much time I have to wire back, right? One of those deals. Um, once again, sorry about the lighting here. I'm trying to see. I know I have one behind me that's probably throwing us off. Let me see if that's a little bit better. But, you know, then again, I probably look like an angel with the light behind my head. <laughs> um, hello, Gail. Thanks for being here. Um, actually, let me see if I can find a... Tap the show button to feature this link during, um, let me see what link I have that I could put here. Links you say it will be, uh, no, I don't want a new one. Uh, recently added, how about that? How about I do this? How about I do that one? Tell me if that shows up. All right, tell me if that shows up. Um, squirrel moment, I was doing some techie things. Um, trying to put my Creative Warrior member link in there for you uh, for the wait list. So yeah, like I said, when I sell a painting, um, somebody claims one like this, right? I, um, <laughs> never an angel, haha, <laughs> says Gail. Um, I check it all over and make sure no touch-ups need to be done. If they do, then I go ahead and do that. Like I said, usually it's like kind of a, around the bottom, like where it sits on my easel. Uh, but then I just noticed this little tiny piece, like little teeny microscopic. I don't know if you can see, but I just got to touch that with a little paint. But I don't have my green right in front of me. So I'm going to just... Uh, I'm going to just do that after I wire back it. I don't know if you're going to be able to get all of me in here. My head's going to get cut off or, which I guess probably would be fine tonight because, I mean, don't be jealous, people. Look at how awesome my hairdo is, okay? Um, I'm going to wire back because I have to do that. So wire backing, like I said, if I have, depends on how much time I have, right? Sometimes I will wire back a bunch of pieces um, at once, but this one is not wire backed and needs to be. So I'm going to lay it flat. I'll, I'll kind of walk you through the steps on what I do for wire backing. Um, let me know if you wire back for your customers um, and or if you have them do it. Because either way, it's fine, but I usually wire back, varnish, so it's like ready to hang when they get it, ready to hang. So I lay down my towel, and, because I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to get this messed up at all. I mean, it's already been claimed, and she's coming to pick it up in the studio on Friday, so I don't have to ship this one. Yay! I love it when that happens. Um, here's another little tip. You can set up, if you have, if you have a lot of, if you make a, if you do a lot of like art shows online and you know, you've, you're doing sales weekly or whatever. Um, 
you literally can hold on i want to make sure this is right you literally can um set whatever schedule you want for them to pick up at your studio so my collector laura um is going to pick up on friday which is totally fine by me that works just fine this is a 16 by 20 size so what i'm doing right now is i'm using my measuring tape and i'm going down um i'm going down from the top down on where i want in a marking with a sharpie where i want my um eye hooks to be and i went down five inches so no right or wrong there like if you want it your wire back to be higher that's fine lower that's fine it's totally up to you you're the artist this like i know i've said this before but tim got me this measuring tape one time um oh babe i buy your measuring tape and it's like 500 feet long I'm like i really don't think that i need a tape that long for these paintings but <clears throat> anyway he's amazing so thanks babe um and then i ended up finding my other one i probably should replace it in there so i don't have to use that long tape because it just takes so long to roll it back up here are my handy dandy tools that i've showed before on here sorry i don't know what they're exactly called my husband got them at lowe's but i just wanted to show you what they look like one is like a captain hook and one is like an ice pick okay and i use the ice pick you know what i really should be of course it's way under there i'm gonna cross my fingers and hope that i don't hold on i really don't want to mess this up hold on a second Okay, you know what I was looking for? I was looking, I usually have, it's over here, but it's under a big pile of papers and books and things like that. Um, but I usually have a piece of cardboard, like a smaller piece of cardboard that I shove inside of the back of my wrapped canvas when I do this because um, I've actually ruined a painting before by not having something protecting it when I went to use my little ice pick that I showed you and hammer in and all that stuff. Um, I had my little ice pick go pfft, right through the canvas. I mean, oh my gosh, talk about wanting to pull your hair out when you know you've sold a painting and then you just stuck an ice pick through it. All right, so I'm just gonna use this junk mail that I got in the mail today um, because I don't know because my cardboard is under here but this is what I do with it so I marked my um you might be able to see it right there I marked my spots with a sharpie where I want to wire back then I just put in my junk mail but you could have a piece of cardboard probably should because that would be a little stronger I'm going to use my little ice pick and I'm going to use my handy dandy um, hammer. And then I'm just going to start a, and, I'm, and I use my forehead to hold it <laughs> when I'm doing a live. When I'm not doing live, I actually push my tape. If I'm doing a lot of these, I'll push my table up against the wall and just lean these, all the paintings, each one as I work on them against the wall so it can hold, stay, stay upright. But right now, I will just use my forehead. <laughs> Um, <laughs> hi, Linda. Linda says, cut the tape. Um, hello, Donna. Hello, Mitzi. Um, let's see. Linda says, pick and hook set for auto repair. That's how I found mine. Oh, you know what? Robin, who's one of our creative warriors. What did Robin say? Because her husband was watching one of my lives one time and he is, he knew exactly what it was. Maybe it was that for auto repair. Oh, you know what I think it, it was because it was some sort of like hose or radiator or something that her husband was saying. So thank you for the men in our lives that kind of know what I'm talking about here to help us out more. 
So thanks for that, Linda. So I'm just going to use my forehead. I got a lot of wrinkles, so I can just kind of like squeeze it in here. And then I'm going to hopefully not drop it because that would not be good. Just pound that in a little. If I had a couple more hands, that would be good. And then I'm just going to flip it the other way. I just like to kind of start those holes first because it's so much easier to try and get the... Um, the eye hooks in once you get the hole started. Um, gasket repair. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Linda Clark. How's everyone's sales going? You doing good this week? I just, um, I just got out of my Creative Warriors group. I did a little impromptu live in there for them to give them a little rundown of what's been happening with me and a couple of sales tips in there um even though it's creative week but that's okay we are creating we're having a go hold on a second babe what are you doing I gotta grab a cord. I forgot. oh I'm going back to i thought you were coming to visit me I, i'm here <laughs> okay i love you i wouldn't have jumped on live if i knew you were coming home i would have visited you no, that's okay because i never get to see him all right, so now I'm just using my eye hooks. Once again, sorry about the lighting tonight. It's just, it is what it is. All right, so I'm putting my eye hook in. These, though, you know what? Hello, just for double protection, I need to leave my junk mail inside of here, like so, just in case I slipped with the eye hook and that went through the canvas. We don't want that. We don't want that. Um, you know how I did fix that painting that I'm talking about too. The one that um, I shoved this right through <laughs> after I sold it. Um, I did fix it. She still wanted it. I I was totally upfront and honest. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, but I ruined your painting. And told her what happened. And I said, and she's like, oh, I still want it. And I said, well, I'm not going to sell it to you like that. I'm like, I'm going to try and fix it first if you still want it. And she did. So I did fix it. I actually, um, I used a modeling paste and some like, I don't know, some like mesh stuff that Tim had in his like, I don't know, junk pile, auto pile, like whatever handyman pile it was. It was like some mesh stuff. Probably for fixing wall, like a, a hole in the wall kind of thing. And I used that mesh. So here's a little tip. I used that mesh on the back of it. I, of course, flattened out the hole. Laura, if you're watching this, uh, Laura M., who is my customer, her, who is purchasing this piece from me on Friday, I please don't get scared. I did not ruin your painting. I'm talking about a painting that I did ruin years ago in the past but yeah so that's what i did i remember i used um some mesh that tim had on the back i made sure that i flattened out the canvas piece it was you know it was like it wasn't just like a little hole it like went in and then ripped so it was like a like a gash kind of but um yeah that was not good but literally after i, I used a little molding paste and that mesh and it really like pulled it together no problem on the back and then on the front, it was actually a, an abstract that I did, which kind of worked in my favor. Um, so right now, if you're jumping on, I'm just giving you a little tip on how I fixed a canvas that I ruined one time of a painting that was already sold. Um, and so on the front of it, because it was an abstract, I just used the same colors, obviously. And it was easy for me to just kind of use the palette knife and just kind of put in some of those colors so yeah it worked out great hello mark thanks for being here mark is my cousin woo, woo. um yeah i hope you're all having a wonderful night all of my friends in florida in georgia in all the southern um states um i'm praying for you tonight and hope that everyone is safe if you had to evacuate i hope that um you did and if not, then, um, you know, either way, I mean, your houses are still there. So whether you're evacuated or not, 
I'm sending out, um, you know, my good vibes for you. Hi, Lydia. Thank you for being here and hanging out with me in the studio. Um, if, if you are not on the wait list for Create Warriors, um, I have the link right here so you can jump on. We do not open again until May 2023, so you've got a little while to wait, um, but you should jump on because my Creative Warriors, some of them are on here, they know how amazing it is. Um, sorry about the baby, okay, my little grandbaby uh, was making noise. Uh, so anyway, I've got my um, hooks in now. So voila, this is the piece that one of my collectors is picking up from my home studio on Friday. Hello, Tina. Thanks for showing up and hanging out with us. Um, you guys can join in the convo, you know, hang out with each other, talk, and you can ask me anything you want because you know how I am. Go ahead and ask away. If I cannot see, if I happen to miss uh, what you're saying, I will go back and look and answer. Um, like I always do for you. So thank you for that. Um, thank you, Karen, by the way, for the stars. You're so sweet. I appreciate it. Stars really do um, help me with my page, help me to continue to bring you some content. Um, so thank you for that. All right, so here's, I'm wire backing right now. Here's my next step. I'm using this, this wire. It, can you see that this wire has like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take it apart, but if you can see it's kind of like twisted like a rope. So it has a bunch of like little pieces. If I pulled the ends, they would all like fray out like that. This is the kind of wire that I like the best for my wire backing, and then my handy dandy needle nose pliers. And all I'm gonna do is take well. You know what? This lighting is, I'm sorry, it's just really not the best tonight. I didn't, I didn't think about this before I started. I'm just going to bend it like so, so I can put it through the, y, the uh, eye hook easier. And uh, then I'm just going to pull it up two and a half, maybe three inches and squeeze it together really close right by the eye hook and then just start twisting it I'm gonna start twisting it with my fingers be careful on this too because especially with all those little um pieces on the end like fray out i pricked my finger numerous times with that but you can just use your um needle nose pliers when you get close to the end to kind of curve and lay those in there so you don't prick your finger like I do okay um I was just telling my creative warriors this inside of my group they they already know it anyway they're amazing but just a reminder and I'll tell you to um it's selling season it is and uh this is like a great time to start getting your artwork out there and showing off your amazing creations. So let me know if you've been doing that or what your plans are. Are you going to be doing an art show, one-off sales? Do you take orders, commissions? Like what is your jam when it comes to your art business? All right. So now what I did and this is kind of an important part if you're following me about wire backing. Um, so this one's already twisted right there. This one is not. But what I did when I was pulling this through, you don't want to pull this all the way through because then it's going to be too tight and they're not going to be able to pull this out to hang it. So what you do is before you start twisting this, you make sure that you've got, and I make sure that I have like, one to two, two and a half inches, like from the top here of my wrapped canvas. And I make sure that it's like this so that it's not super duper tight and they can easily put this 
on a tack or a nail or whatever they want to put it on. So with these canvases, um, these ones are, first of all, my back is going to break. Hold on a second. I, I, uh, need to sit for a moment. <laughs> my back was starting to spasm. I don't think anybody wants to hear me scream on cam camera. That probably wouldn't be too fun. But maybe it would, and then we could laugh about it later when I felt better. Hello, Tina. Um, Lydia. I appreciate you all being here. So right now I'm just twisting the wire up and around. Up and around, and then I kind of, I twist it up, and then I kind of come back down a little bit with it. And remember to use your pliers when it gets really close uh, so that you don't prick your finger like I have done. All right, so that's all I need that for. Now, last step. Oh, last step, and of course I don't have my scissors right here, so give me a second. I gotta grab those. But I, using my electrical tape, I really love this stuff. And I'll show you what I do with that in a second. As I get my handy dandy scissors. So all I'm doing with the electrical tape is I'm just, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to just uh, wrap it around the pieces that I just wrapped around. Does that make any sense? Wrap around the pieces you just wrapped around. That way where those little tiny little um, prickly pieces are, they are not going to ever touch the canvas because you don't want to ruin your painting. They're never going to touch the canvas that way and they won't um, poke your customer either when they're trying to hang their piece on their wall. Your beautiful painting. Um, Lydia, good question, says, where do you get your supplies? Um, which supplies in particular are you talking about, Lydia? If you're talking about all the wire backing supplies, um, I'll tell you about these. So most of them I just get at Lowe's or I just get at my uh, local hardware store. I have a couple like mom and pop kind of places like in my city. So I'll go there or I'll go to Lowe's and I will get my wire backing, my eye hooks, my wire, um, and I keep it all, I keep them in these, these little caddies that I get at like the dollar store, or nowadays the dollar 25 store. Um, some of the stuff I stole from my husband's toolbox because he doesn't know what's missing. He never puts anything back anyway. And um, yeah. Oh, and I, I probably told you, but if not, you know, I have the wire cutters and we need wire cutters to cut the wire. Um, if you're talking about, and, so, and I have ordered this stuff on Amazon too, as well, Lydia. Um, and if you're talking about my actual art supplies that I create my pieces with, I'm so excited for this piece. It's like, I'm a little scared to like, uh, she is, she's a great uh, collector of mine and friend, like she's super sweet, her and her hubby webby. But I thought, and I painted this and I painted this last year. So not this fall, but last fall. And I thought I'm never going to sell this piece. No way. Cause I, that's how much I love it. I really do love this piece. Um, but she saw it and she loved it and asked me, so, um, I gave her the price that I felt comfortable selling it at and she loves it and wants it and I want her to have it, but I did hold on to it for a year and I did have it hanging in my home for a year and I really enjoyed it. Um, here's the tip though. Do not sell every single piece that you paint because you are going to want to have a collection of your own pieces. You're going to want to have something to hand down to your kids, to your grandkids, or just have, you know, for you, it, whatever you want to do with it, 
but you're the artist so don't like sell everything because we need to hold on to some pieces um, but I do have many landscape pieces already um, one that has won a prize and a show so I'm holding on to that one um, thank you Lydia um, give you a closer view but this one all the trees and um, the water reflection was done with you know heavy body paints and um, yeah so if you're wondering about art supplies I use a lot of these this piece is a higher end piece but usually I do quick fast like acrylic paintings just with like apple barrel paints that I have sold inside of my collectors group for years um, for you know a great price usually for like under a hundred dollars um, but if you're going to sell something you know that's a little more than that or even way more than that higher end piece you don't want to just be using craft paints you can use these on some portions but you should be using really nice thick heavy bodied kind of paints for something like that um, so I get these literally at like Walmart or Hobby Lobby or Michaels those are my favorite places to get art supplies. Um, hello, Zena. Thanks for being here. Also, I've used Art Deco, um, the plaid. So these are these are what I call my fluid craft paints, and I paint in acrylic. Um, I do a little bit of watercolor here or there, but I'm not an expert at that. My specialty is acrylics. Um, so that's where I get that stuff, and then the heavier body paints, which. I literally will knock all this stuff over if I get in my closet right now, so I'm not going to do it. Um, but I've shown them on camera numerous times, and I will show them again uh, when I'm on, because um, I'm always showing you those. But my heavy body paints I get um, usually at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I've ordered online from like Dick Blick before love that love uh, their supplies as well um, and you know especially when everybody was like at home and couldn't go out of their house to go anywhere I would order stuff on Amazon um, same with my canvases like you know I will I will get them I don't really like to get them at Walmart I get my canvases at Hobby Lobby or Michaels and um, sometimes I like Joanne fabrics I love you. Can't make past your cords. Oh, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> you couldn't make it past my cords. Have a good night, babe. Um, my, so my canvas is like I don't. If I'm really hard up, I'll get them at Walmart, but I don't like to do that. My canvases are more picky, so I'll get them at um, Hobby Lobby or Michaels. The the prefabbed canvases like this are fine for like. You know, paintings that are like a few hundred dollars or less, you know, maybe 350 or less. This is just my viewpoints as an artist. But if you're gonna sell like in the $400 range or higher pieces, and like I used to buy these for my quick, fast acrylic paintings I was just talking about that I sold for under $100 on like a daily basis inside of my collector's group. That's what I would use, this, this type of thing. But like I said, this is good for like up to maybe $350 for me, my, my artist opinion. So if I'm going to be doing something that I know is going to be more of a premium price, um, then I'm going to get even a better quality than just the, the tiny, um, which is probably not even a half inch here. Maybe it is, is a half inch here, but I would get like the thicker wrapped like gallery can so the frame would be thicker hopefully that makes sense to you um like even i've sold some higher end pieces like a lot of abstracts and stuff on ebay years ago where i did like it was probably like two two and a half inches thick i mean those are prefab too but they're like better quality um oh my god i could talk about cans canvases all day because there's like this one has I never ever, by the way, buy the staples on the side. If you see that, never get that because it's just crappy. It's just doesn't look good. Most people nowadays will just hang your painting like this when they get it. 
Some of them really love them. Maybe my customer, Laura, will have this professionally framed. I don't know, it's up to her. I don't get into framing, but I never will buy the staples right here. The staples are right here on this prefab, but that's okay by me because this painting is not thousands and thousands of dollars and um, it's the staples aren't showing, so that's good. Um, but like I said, I could talk about canvases all day. There's other prefab canvases that are good as well, you know, with the thicker, like I was saying here. And then also, instead of the staples here, it's kind of like wrapped around and then there's like another um, frame. So when you go to Michael's and Hobby Lobby, look, check things out. So like this will start making sense to you. Um, but they have like another frame and I don't know all the technical terms, okay? So you can beat me up about it if you want, but I'm just like kind of down to earth, like whatever, okay? So there's another frame, even though there's a frame here, there's the canvas is wrapped around it, the staples are in here, and then there's another frame, so it's like double framed on the back, which is good. And, that, and my general size for paintings is this, is a 16 by 20 but I have painted much bigger pieces before on like three foot or four or even five foot. And when I get into that type of size, then I have my husband, if he has time, make my frame and I stretch my own canvas around the frame. Um, or we pay one of our friends, our, our friend Brian, usually for, because um, he's a carpenter, to make my frames. But that's not, that's for like more premium, higher end kind of stuff. Hello, Linda. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Linda. Um, Linda Clark says, would you do a quick rundown of everything needed to hang that painting? I sure will. I'm sorry I missed that. I'm sorry, I missed that. I'm just, I'm, try, I'm trying to see. It's really tidy. Don't have my computer open right now. Okay, so, um, two. Okay, so to hang it, basically, what I did was I wire backed it. We need to have a wire on it. I mean, some people will say, no, you don't, because you can just hang it with one tack like this, which I do a lot of the times. But when I'm selling a painting to a customer, I don't want them to just be like, oh, that's kind of cheesy. She doesn't even have a wire on it. So I wire back it. So what I did, Linda, was I um, put the eye hooks in and I wrapped some electrical tape around it with my wire and I measured and all that so that I could get this on here to hang. But I do not get into framing. I did that years ago, I'm all set because it costs me a lot to ship a, a framed piece and I've, sh I've shipped paintings and I do all over the country. So it's a lot uh, easier for me and um, it's cheaper shipping as well if you just ship it like this without a big frame on it um, and plus I have found out that most of your customers the ones that do want a frame because not all of them do it's it's hip it's in these days to just hang it as is but because this is a landscape piece and uh, my customer Laura she has a uh, two or three of my other uh, pieces as well I can't remember if she framed them or not. She might, but um, uh, most people kind of just hang them like this. Um, but when they do want when they do want it framed, I found throughout the years that um, it's best to let them frame it. Take it to their frame shop, have them frame it because they they want to pick out their own frame usually. They want it to match their home decor usually. You know things like that. Okay, so Linda, um, this is what, these are all the supplies that I use to wire back my painting. Oops, what did I just drop? Oh, I better move my painting out of the way before I ruin it. 
So these are all the supplies I used to wire back. My wire. We need wire. And I have numerous packages of these hung in my studio. So when I ran out, I was like, oh, I'm going to grab another one. My electrical tape. Sharpie to measure down. And on that one that I just did, I measured down five inches. My handy dandy tools that Linda was just letting us know that is for working on cars. And one looks like a Captain Hook and one looks like a, an ice pick. And I'm sorry, my light just went out, but we're gonna have to deal with it. So it's a little bit dark. It's almost Halloween time anyway, so it's a little spooky. Um, measuring tape to see how far down you want to go with your canvas to put your eye hooks in because you want it the same on both sides. Here's a tip. Do not put your your holes in your eye hooks in the very middle of your painting. Don't do that. Put it up a little bit, okay? Closer to the top, but not, re, not right at the top. So I, if you put it right in the middle of your painting, you know what usually happens is the painting kind of like hangs up, like say this side of my face is the wall, then usually your, the painting is gonna like hang like this or it's just not gonna look right. So make sure that, you know, you move it up. Say that my hand is the whole painting. You wanna put the eye hooks like right about here if this is the top of the painting, okay? But not too close. And then don't have a lot of extra give in your wire or it will do the same thing. It will hang off the wall like this. And we want it to be flush with the wall. All right, so tape measure. And did I already show you these? Wire, I mean, um, needle nose pliers. And my wire cutters, we need these. Um, I don't know why I have my exacto knife out. We don't need that. And I think that's it. Oh, and then I use, um, obviously, my um, eye hooks that are in here. And I get this little caddy to keep stuff in. I gotta replenish this, I'm getting kinda low. Um, here's another thing that you can do if you want, um, which I used to do a lot when I was selling pretty much daily in my uh, collector's group. Um, I would also put, send them one of these uh, hanging piece things. I don't even know what they're called. You know me with my words. With a nail. And, uh, you know, so they can put this in their wall. And then, I think it's backwards. Like that. And then they uh, hang their painting. So, these usually come, <clears throat> these little gadgets, usually come, like, right inside your kits for um, hanging. It, it will say, like, picture hanging. Sorry about the light, like it's really bad lighting and you know, I really, I'm sorry, but. Um, so yeah, there you go. Like sometimes your kits come with these, which I don't recommend the claws. I don't like these, I don't really use these. Um, I have used them before, but I'm talking about little tiny pieces and then I just put like a little claw thing there because it's really small. But I don't, I don't typically like to use that um and then if we were going to do an art show with our art association or if you are going to be involved in an in-person show um where you know it's juried you had to submit a piece you had to pay for your spa i've done many of those um then we can have another conversation because then you need to get into actually framing and you need to make everything like pristine for the show so um, that's another story if you're going to be presenting work on that. Okay, I gotta go because my, my little Virginia is, like, crying and I can hear her and, um, I was supposed to take her for a walk. Don't worry, my, my brother's got her, but, um, it's not like I'm sitting here like, oh, why don't you scream in the other room while I do a lie? <laughs> but, and I'm, look what I'm drinking already, my marshmallow Christmas cup. And, uh, yeah, still drinking coffee. That's ridiculous. Kind of late. Uh, Linda says galleries don't recommend the cloth ones. Galleries don't recommend the cloth ones 
either. I you, I think that's what she said. It's hard. I have to press more and I can't on my phone. But thank you for that, Linda. Um, so, yeah, when I was feeding Virginia this afternoon and I got out my cup and then I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, yeah, we get to do Elf on the Shelf. I never got to do that before because my kids were too old when Elf on the Shelf came out. And now Virginia's one, so we're going to do Halloween and dress her up super cute next month and do Elf on the Shelf. So, really looking forward to that, peeps. Um, Linda says autocorrect. Yeah, I'll have to get on the computer. My computer just went out. That's why my light went out, because it was plugged in the computer. So, anyway, thanks for, like, bearing with me tonight. I hope this has been helpful, and thank you so much for hanging out in the studio with me. If, um, just to recap real quick, I wire back to this beautiful piece that I totally love that one of my customers claimed today. She'll be picking this up in my studio on Friday and we just did some wire backing. Sorry, the lighting was not this bad at the beginning of the video so you actually could see something that I was doing. <laughs> so you can check the recording if you want because I leave that on here. Um, I did answer some questions about supplies used for wire backing. I also went through some general supplies that I used for my art supplies to actually create paintings. So you can check that out um, as well. And Linda Clark says, I love that painting. Thank you so much, Linda. Me too. Me too. It took me a whole year to decide like, mm, I don't know if I want to put that out there, but I did. And um, someone scoffed it right up. Um, and I got another order. I've got an order to a uh, nice commission of a sunset to paint. Um, make sure you're only taking on commissions and orders of things that you want to paint, by the way. Okay, because I want you to have fun doing this. And this is the time because it is selling season. Mwah. Love you all. Gotta run. Gotta go take the baby. And we're going to take a quick walk and take a tubby. So I hope that you have a wonderful night. If you're down south, be safe. My prayers are with you. And uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.